On tap, to me, grand refer. Hi, I am David Martinez, and this is your Better Beer Authority. For today's episode, we're going to revisit the show's first blind beer review, Chimay Blue Cap, also known as Chimay Grand Reserve. Chimay Blue is brewed by the Trapeze Monks of Scarmont Abbey in Chimay, Belgium. This dark amber beer has notes of dark fruit, such as raisins and ripe plum, which are followed by a slight peppery finish. Though this beer holds a score of 100 in rate beer and 96, 96 in beer advocate, on top of being the most reviewed Belgian ale on both sides, the beer did not get a lot of love from the original cast. On a regular taste test, it gathered a 6.3 rating, and when tasted blindly, it got a 6.7 rating. Let's see if the East Coast crew has a different uh, spin on it. Okay, so let the blind taste begin. Hey Mark, how are you doing today? Very good. Glad to hear, man. So, uh, talk to me about the taste and smell of this beer. Can I talk about the smell first? Of course. Okay. <laughs> uh, the smell, I'm de definitely getting, I'd say, some uh, Belgian characters. Um, a little bit of clove, banana, but not very much. Um, I'd say more the kind of raisin, uh, toffee uh, qualities in a lot of uh, bigger ABV Belgian beers. So I'm also getting some alcohol in the, in the aroma. And the flavors. Yeah, it matches pretty nicely. It's, again, um, very little bitterness. I think there's probably minimal hops in here, but there's some of that specialty Belgian malts, uh, you know, meeting with the, the alcohol. So okay. I'd say those are the two predominant uh, flavors that I get. Excellent. And uh, Sack, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, Thanks. Can you uh, tell me a little bit about the appearance and mouthfeel? So uh, I'll start. The appearance, uh, like Mark said, definitely comes off of Belgian, sort of a deep brown, reddish hue. Um, we've got definitely some cloudiness from yeast in there. Uh, mouthfeel is, you know, it's got a, a little bit of alcohol to it, but overall very smooth, drinkable. Uh, some of the flavors that Mark mentioned, I'm getting the same things that... Uh, Dried fruits, a little bit of yeast character, but overall, you know, very, very drinkable beer, and I think very dangerous. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. So, um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and, you know, yeah, the, it's ABV is kind of up there. Um, not as high as I've seen on some of uh, other uh, uh, beers of this same kind, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. Rich, uh, go ahead and uh, finish us off uh, with the style of this beer. I think it's a quad. Um Based on some of the smells, I was getting was getting a, a more boozy smell than taste. And what you just said, kind of, it's not as high of alcohol as others in the style, leads me to say, yeah, this is a, a quad, because there's a higher ABV. Um, when I was tasting and smelling it, I, for some reason the words were coming to me about the flavors I was getting. And then when Mark said he was getting the apple, I was thinking apple brandy. Type flavors mm -hmm. and the toffee. I was getting that in there too. It's not that it's barrel aged, but those are qualities of some of the Belgian quads I've had. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, talking about ratings. So, Mark, your rating and why? Okay, uh, so I'm going to give it an eight. Um, I think it's a good example. I'm going to agree with uh, Rich as a Belgian quad, um, but. Still not 100% sure if I had a blind taste that I could tell a double from a quad sometimes, but I, just, I think it's probably a quad uh, because I'm getting a little bit more bluesy character. Um, it's a really good beer, um, something that I definitely would recommend for people who like the style especially, but even just for uh, maybe casual beer drinkers or people who like wine. And, and There's a lot of kind of uh, uh, vinous qualities that I think come through, maybe for the alcohol. Um, so... Something that I recommend, would love to drink again, eight. Zach? So, uh, I would go with an eight as well. Um, I'm going to agree with Mark that it borders on a double or a quad, and the distinction for those is sort of difficult to make, but uh, I'm again, I find it very drinkable. Uh, I can imagine that it's probably a big bottle, and it's the type of thing that my wife and I would really like to share, um, you know, with some nice cheeses, charcuterie. And I think it'd just be a nice, you know, afternoon sipper beer. Excellent. And alcoholic. <laughs> I, <laughs> oh, this old thing? <laughs> okay. Thanks for the shirt, I heart beer, whatever. Anyways, 
Um, I'm giving it a seven. You know, if you had give, given me a nice stone with this, I may have given it an eight. <laughs> so, you know, you're not doing the beer service, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> sure. I kid. Um, I think of this pen, I'm probably the one who likes uh, Belgian styles the least, but I like I like this. Um, you know, it doesn't have a strong banana ester qualities uh, or the clove qualities. Those are, to me, off-putting, but a lot of people like them, and you know, having those qualities in beers isn't a sign that it's a bad beer. It's just it's flavors I don't like. But this is a good beer. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to finish this happily. <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so nobody wants to take a gander of what it might be. Uh, I was, bef- before the, your boo, you know, this, you said is a lower on the ABV thing. I was going to think St. Bernard is tight, but, hmm. you know. I guess. Anyone else? I, I would say it's a Belgian example. A Belgian example. I don't think it's an American take on a Belgian, but... Yeah, I mean, initially when I saw it and smelled it, I thought maybe something along Oma Gang, but it doesn't have their... They, their yeast is very characteristic to me, and I don't really get that. So, yeah, I would go with more of a, a European example. I think St. Bernardus is, is a good guess on it. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and do the reveal. So we are having... Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Pass this around. So the reason why I wanted to do this, this is actually the third time that she made Blue Reserve is being reviewed on the show. Hmm. The first time it was just a regular, this is before uh, um, the crew uh, started doing the blind solo, and this was actually the first blind beer that they did. Yeah. Reason why, because this is consider a, a more renowned beer. I mean, it's actually a Belgian strong ale. Okay. Um, and uh, the first time that it was reviewed, it got a uh, 6.3 on the BPA scale. And when it was blind reviewed, it was uh, 6.7. Yeah. So I'm thinking for a beer that is supposed to be like the, the, the pinnacle of, you know, Belgian strong ales, you know, it wasn't doing really good on the scale. So I figure let's try doing it again and see if, you know, the East Coast can give it a little bit of a spin. And Closer I mean, to Belgium. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the only one. Right? Um, some people have been asking us to review some of the beers that the previous crew had done, and I wasn't sure about doing it because I don't want to I feel like we're showing them up or anything, but this is also... A good reason why we still do blind taste tests, because you never you never know. And it's, uh... this is definitely one of the beers that got me drinking Belgian, the yeah. Belgian beers. Uh, I remember when I first started drinking craft beers, went to Chimay beer dinner <laughs> and kind of went through the entire line, the Cinq Sans, uh, all the way up to the Grand Reserve, and I was like, oh, these beers are awesome. So, so this question goes to any any of you guys. So, what do you think this beer scored a little bit higher in our end? And, and I'm saying in the sense of you know, I know that Rich. Is not a fan of the style. I know how you, I don't know how you guys are, you know, keen on the style itself, but we, we gave it a, a that's a 7.75, I believe, in comparison to even a 6.7. So it's a little bit better, I believe, but, well, but um, is there anything that you think uh, might have been the case? Or why? I think it's hard to say because it's really all subjective. Yeah. yeah. Aside from, I think, uh, I don't think Ryan Bell was with the sh- on the show when they did these the two times. And I think a guy named Jeff Renz, maybe. Those guys are big home brewers. And I think when you home brew, you have, like, these two guys are, are big home brewers. So when you home brew an awful lot, I think you get a feel for beers, being able to pick out various flavors, yeast, hops, malts, and stuff. And I and I think that that's why, you know, I'm not, that's why I think these guys mm. give it a high rating because they have that expertise. And we're able to recognize some of these good qualities in the beer, uh, as opposed to maybe the non-home brewers who are more used to American style ales, IPAs, and pale ales, as opposed to these. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. <laughs> the Chimay Blue gets a seven point seven on the BBA scale. Did you enjoy the revisit of this particular beer? Let us know in the comments. I am David Martinez, and this has been your Better Beer Authority. Better Beer Authority.